wanted to introduce the three main types of triage that we use in our area. The first one is start triage, and it's simple triage and rapid transport. This is one of my favorites. So you arrive on the scene, the first thing you do is kind of yell out to everyone, and those that can move have them go walk to a tree or go stand in an area. So you kind of get all the walking wounded together. And then all those that were unable to move, we need to assess. So as soon as you realize you have a mass casualty incident, of course, we're calling for additional resources, get your walking wounded out of the way. And then the first thing we do is we'll come down and look at respirations. And we look to see if they're breathing or not. And that's pretty easy to see chest rise or not. If they are not breathing, we come over here and then we open their airway and see if that does it. So if it's a trauma patient, it might be a jaw thrust. Um, if, if you had a non-trauma situation, I guess you could do a head tilt chin lift. Most of the ones I've dealt with the mass casualties have been trauma patients. But if you had a, a medical situation, you would be able to do a head tilt chin lift, see if they're breathing. If they start breathing, um, we're going to say because they could not keep their main their airway could not maintain their airway they couldn't be an immediate we tag them red then we look at respirations are they breathing yes if it's over 30 a minute we immediately go to immediate and we tag them red if it's under 30 we next have to go down to perfusion and see if they're breathe or not breathing see if they have a pulse and we're looking for a radial pulse and if they don't have one, we assume their blood pressure is low and they must be in shock. So we tag them red. And then we look for any major bleeding, apply tourniquets, um, control bleeding is necessary. If they do have a radio pulse, we then come down and check mental status. If their mental status is altered in any way and they cannot follow commands, we then tag them red. However, if they can follow commands, we tag them yellow. So it's really kind of hard to get to this yellow, but it's supposed to be someone who is unable to move, is breathing, has a pulse, uh, just couldn't, uh, basically couldn't get out of there. So they must have some significant injury where they're unable to move, but can still follow commands, and that makes them a yellow. The next one we use is jump start, and you'll see that this is not much different uh, than start, except we use this for pediatrics. And there's just a couple of things I want to... Um, want to mention here that are a little bit different. One is the respiratory rate. When we get down to this point, you notice that if it's less than 15 or more than 45, we'll tag them immediate. If it's between that range, then we come down and check a pulse. However, if they're not breathing, we come over here, we open their, their airway. If they're breathing, we tag them red, um, check their pulse, no pulse, we tag them expectant, which means we think they're going to die. If they do, open up the airway, they do have a pulse, but they're not breathing, then we're going to give that five rescue breaths. And if they remain apneic, they don't start breathing after five rescue breaths, then we'll tag them expectant. However, if they do start breathing, then we'll tag them immediate. The last one is salt triage, which kind of takes uh, start triage and adds a little bit to it. So the first one is sort, and that's kind of the first step you do with, with start triage anyways, where you um, have the walking wounded and you put them off to the side and you're going to sort them third. Um, those that can follow commands, like can they wave to you, but maybe they can't move, so they, you know they follow commands, that would be yellow in the start triage. Um, so here we're going to sort those second. And then the ones that can't move and have no response to your calling out to them, those are the ones we want to go to first. And then we're going to um, come down here to assessing the patients and then doing any life-saving skills, such as um, controlling bleeding, opening the airway, um, chest decompression, or an auto-injector. Now, when we assess the patients, we want to look to see, are they breathing? Uh, if no, we say they're expectant or dead. And then if they are breathing, do we do things like, um, how is their breathing? Do they have a peripheral pulse? Can they follow commands? Um, are they have, do they have any major bleeding? If all those things are okay, um, then we come over to, they must have pretty minor injuries, or we look at their injuries, see if they're relatively minor. If they're minor, we tag them green. If they're not, we tag them yellow or delayed. However, if one of these things, like they can't obey command, they don't have a radial pulse, they're not breathing real well, or they have significant bleeding, then we come down and we look at them and say, geez, do you think they'll live or not? If we do, we'll tag them red. If we don't think they could have lived, we tag them as expected. So these are the three major triage methods that we have, start, jump start for 